In this lecture, I will first discuss the difference between the fixed effect model and first difference uh, model and then I will discuss the estimation of random effect model and then discuss the possible test to decide whether to use pool model vis a vis the panel model and then discuss the Hausmann specification test to judge the applicability of fixed effect or uh, random effect model. And then I will discuss the different approaches uh, used for the estimation of the panel model. In the last class I have introduced the panel data method and I have uh, also introduced the fixed effect model and first difference model. Now let us make a distinction between the fixed effect and first difference model. Now for t equal to 2, 2 methods are identical. For t greater than or equal to 3, the methods give rise different result, but given the assumption both are unbiased and consistent for short period, uh, you get uh, that as t is fixed in uh, tends to infinity, the um, we have a case of unbiased and consistent estimator. Now for long period that is uh, t larger than 30 say and n not large co-integration problem may be present in the data set. So, here fixed difference of, um, for the first difference method should be safer because first differencing will eliminate the time frame present in the data set and thus remove the co-integration problem. So, for uh, some of the cases there is the possibility of uh, using fixed first difference method because in the data set you may avoid the contrigation um, problem. Now estimation of fixed effect model based on unbalanced panel data set does not pose much of the problem. Now the one of the basic assumption of panel data set is that uh, for n cross sectional unit of the panel uh, it constitute a simple random sample from the universe of such unit and missing unit for some times may make the sample non-representative. The data set may get affected by selectivity bias which may make the estimates inconsistent. So uh, you may end up with a situation of selectivity bias and that may result inconsistent estimate of the parameter. Now come to the random effect model and its estimation procedure. Now write the model as yit equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 t plus ai plus epsilon i t i equal to 1 to up to n and t running from 1 to capital T. Now the assumptions are ais are random drawing from a distribution having expectation of a equal to 0 and a given variance strict endogeneity of ais that is excess uh, are assumed that is expectation of AI given excess are equal to 0 and homoscedasticity of AIS that is variance of AI given excess are sigma s square uh, for all i running from up to n uh, and also note that expectation of AI A equal to 0 the intercept term B naught will capture the non-zero mean level of the Y data. Now random effect model uh, assumptions 11 implies covariance of a xit ait equal to 0. Therefore, for the random effect model OLS regression of y on x based on the pool data set will give the unbiased and consistent estimate of the parameter beta naught and beta 1. But these estimates are different from the corresponding random effect estimate. Now in order to visualize the random effect estimation process, uh, let us first note that the composite error term vit equal to ai plus epsilon it of the equation 10 is necessarily autocorrelated uh, because, uh, because v1 t up to v2 t are present not for every i. The correlation between vit and uh, epsilon it are given by um, VITS and VI covariance between VITS and VIES is equal to sigma s square divided by sigma s square plus sigma epsilon square uh, for R not equal to s. 
Now the positive autocorrelation of the error which may be which can be substantial uh, is taken care of the random effect estimation by the following transformation of the random effect model. That is in order to um, avoid the problem of uh, correlation between VITS and VITS between two uh, that is the error term at two time point a suitable transformation is made uh, following and yit minus lambda yi equal to beta naught plus 1 minus lambda plus beta 1 um, multiplied by xit minus lambda x bar t plus vit minus lambda vit. Note that this random effect transformation uh, and the fixed effect transformation are very similar looks like. Random effect transformation will allow time constant variables like dummies for the cross sectional unit in regression equation and uh, lambda is not known and estimate of lambda hat has to be obtained and this is done by using residual obtained from the pooled OLS of the uh, fixed effect estimation. Now, if xit and a are correlated then random effect estimator of the regression coefficient will be inconsistent. And OLS estimation of equation 13 which is, is, the, is the GLS uh, estimation of equation 10 using the appropriate variance covariance matrix uh, will give us the random effect estimation. So, random effect estimation is basically, is basically is the generalized uh, least square estimate of the original data model allowing for uh, the allowing for the existence of appropriate variance covariance matrix of the composite error term. Now, under the random effect model assumption of this will be and uh, under the assumption of random effect model this will be unbiased, consistent and efficient. So, GLS estimation of equation and 10 will provide us the unbiased, consistent as well as efficient estimate of the structural parameters. Now, uh, let us examine uh, why how we should distinguish between fixed effect model or random effect model that is um, is there any test to examine whether uh, whether we should use fixed effect model or random effect model. The test that examine whether data set will contain all the observed component. Uh, assuming GDP is coming from the random effect model is given by yit equal to beta naught plus beta 1 xit plus alpha i plus epsilon it and the null hypothesis sigma s square equal to 0 is tested and if h naught is rejected the panel OLS will be consistent. So, if we find that uh, h naught sigma s square equal to 0 is not rejected and then panel uh, OLS will be consistent. Now, the bruce pagon lagrange multiplier test is used for this purpose. The random effect model is estimated and then using the random effect regression residual and analysis of variance is performed to check if the variance component due to unit i is statistically significant. Now, if H naught is not rejected, uh, panel OLS will be consistent and may be efficient. Now, rejection of H naught in indicates the presence of unobserved effect component and the nature of the unobserved effect component fixed effect or random effect type to be determined next. So, uh, if we find that pooled model is not the appropriate one, then next question is uh, whether to use fixed effect model or random effect model that will be decided uh, on the basis of the next test. The, so, test of the random effect assumption and this is basically done by Hausmann test. Now, if true DDP is random effect model, both the random effect and fixed effect estimator of the regression coefficient will be consistent. If on the other hand, true GDP is of the fixed effect one, fixed effect estimator of the regression coefficient will be consistent whereas, the corresponding random effect estimator will not be. So, Hausmann test of random effect assumption test H naught true DDP is random effect model. Now, suppose random effect 
uh, suppose beta hat F e and uh, beta hat R e are the fixed effect and random effect parameter estimate and are there and are their estimated asymptotic uh, variance covariance matrix the Hausmann test statistics is given by uh, H is the difference between beta hat F e and beta hat R e multiplied by variance estimated variance of uh, covariance matrix of the fixed effect and random effect estimator and inverse of that and multiplied by uh, beta hat uh, F e and beta hat R e. Now, uh, under H naught R e model assumption holds and this follows a chi square k distribution. Note the Hausmann test will result help to decide whether random effect uh, to be accepted against fixed effect or not. Researcher often close be choose between random effect and fixed effect based on whether AIs are the best viewed as parameter to be estimated or outcomes of a random variable. So, in the fixed effect model we treat AIJ as parameters and in the random effect model we treat AI, AIJs are basically coming from a random sample uh, of a uh, suitable purpose. Now, when cross sectional units are city, provinces, countries, etc., then we prefer fixed effect model as a reasonable choice. So, for the cross sectional units like cities, provinces, countries, etc., we prefer fixed effect model as a reasonable choice. Now, panel now come to the method of estimation of the panel data. Now, consider the uh, case where y i t is the value of a scalar dependent variable for the i th individual unit for the t th time point and x i t as x 1 i t x 2 i t plus x k i t is a k vector of observed values of k explanatory variable with uh, i th individual unit for the i th time point. Epsilon i t is a scalar random distribution term. The most general model of the data model specification is y i t equal to alpha i t plus x i prime beta i t plus epsilon i t i running from 1 to n and t running from 1 to t where alpha i t and beta i t are the time dependent regression model parameters and note that the model has n t plus k n t regression model parameters which cannot be estimated on the basis of NT sample observation without imposing parametric restriction. So, what basically we need some parametric restriction in order uh, to have a consistent estimate of the parameter. Now, consider the pool model uh, y i t equal to alpha plus x i t prime beta plus epsilon i t i running from 1 to n and t running from 1 to t where alpha is a scalar parameter and beta equal to beta 1, beta 2 up to beta k is the k vector of slope coefficient. If for a given panel data set this is a correct specification and x's are uncorrelated with epsilon i t the model will be consistently estimated by OLS. However, for individual i epsilon i t is likely to be autocorrelated and or heteroscedastic and hence pooled OLS may not be the efficient method and also it will underestimate the standard error of the estimated beta. Now, uh, let us consider the model with unit and time dummies. So, uh, introducing uh, unit dummy and time dummy for each of these observation we have a composite model and this model constitute n plus t minus 1 plus k number of parameters and this can be estimated if both n and t uh, tending to infinity. Now, but for the short panel as n tends to infinity and t finite the t minus 1 gammas can be consistently estimated. Now, the question arises whether beta can be consistently estimated. Now, as n tends to infinity number of parameters to be estimated increases and hence the question of consistent estimation of beta rises. Now, note that if the individual units can be grouped into a fixed number of a subgroup based on some criteria 
then the problem of problem mentioned above may be resolved and beta can be consistently estimated. So, if one can group the observation into some uh, different subgroup different based on some definite criteria then problem of uh, estimation uh, uh, as mentioned above can be resolved and one can get consistent estimate of beta. So, let us distinguish between the fixed effect and random effect model. Now, allowing for individual specific effect we have the model y i t equal to alpha plus alpha alpha plus x i t prime beta plus epsilon i t. Epsilon i t are independently and identically distributed over i and t. Here alpha is a random variable that captures the unobserved heterogeneity and the following assumption of strong exogeneity is made. Uh, if epsilon i t given alpha i t and x i t equal to 0. Uh, note that strong exogeneity rule out the presence of lag dependent variable in the set of explanatory variables. Okay. So, by assumption of strong exogeneity we rule out the existence of lag dependent variable from the set of explanatory variable. Now, consider the fixed effect model. This allows the individual specific unobservable variable to be potentially correlated with some of the explanatory variable. Note if fixed effect alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n are present and correlated with x i t then pooled OLS estimator of beta will be inconsistent and therefore, an alternative consistent estimator of beta for the fixed effect model is called, called for. Now, uh, an alternative fixed effect estimator that is the first different estimator. Given the fixed effect estimator of the model, uh, we can have first different model taking, uh, take, taking difference of, of y, y i t from y i t minus 1. Note that pooled OLS on the first difference data set will yield a consistent estimator of beta. However, since epsilon i t is i i d delta uh, epsilon i t will be moving average error and hence auto correlated and therefore, this pooled OLS first difference estimator will be inefficient and is standard, er uh, standard error underestimated unless appropriate correlation are not done. Okay. So, you find that in this case the delta epsilon i t will be moving average process and it affects the consistency property of the estimator. Now, come to the random effect model. In this model the individual specific effect epsilon i are assumed to be distributed independently of the explanatory variable. Additionally, alpha i are assumed to be distributed identically and independently with mean alpha and variance sigma alpha square. Note that no specific form of the distribution is assumed. That is what we are basically assuming alpha i as uh, is coming from any uh, random sample, but we are not uh, assuming any specific form of the distribution. Now, uh, let us distinguish between the fundamental difference between the fixed effect and random effect model. Now, both model are expressed as y i t equal to alpha i plus x i t beta plus epsilon i t. So, that both models assume expectation of y i t given alpha i and x i t equal to alpha i plus x i prime beta. The individual specific effect uh, alpha i's are unknown and these cannot be estimated in short panel. Now, taking expectation you get expectation of y i t given x i t equal to expectation of alpha i given x i t plus x i t prime epsilon i t. Now, for the random effect model it is assumed that expectation of alpha i given x i t equal to I alpha. So, that expectation of uh, y i t given x i t equal to alpha plus x i t prime beta. Hence, it is possible to identify expectation of y i t given x i t. Now, for the random effect model not only beta can be consistently estimated, it can also be identified. For the fixed effect model on the other hand expectation of alpha i given x i t varies with x i t and it is uh, not uh, known how it varies. Yes, therefore, expectation of y i t given x i t cannot be identified. 
However, it is possible to consistently estimate beta in the fixed effect model uh, even with the short period data. Now, let us consider the issue of endogeneity in the panel data analysis and for this we perform Hirschman Taylor hybrid form of the model. Now, consider the panel model y i equal to alpha plus beta i x i t plus epsilon i t or y i t equal to beta x i t plus v i t where v i t represent the composite error a i plus epsilon i t. Now, suppose the assumption covariance of x i and e i is equal to 0 uh, does not hold that is an endogeneity problem arises then the random effect model is specified as the difference between y i t minus lambda y i t bar equal to beta x i t minus lambda x i bar plus v i t plus lambda v i bar. Here, OLS estimation of this random model will not eat consistent estimator of beta because like x i t minus lambda x i t and v i t minus uh, v i are assumed to be correlated. In this lecture, we basically summarizes the difference between the fixed effect model and first difference model and then discusses the estimation of the random effect model. After that, I have discussed the, the, the test procedure which has been used in order to um, see whether pool model um, vis a vis the panel model is applicable and finally, I have discussed the Hausmann specification test to see whether the random effect model or the fixed effect model will be applicable for the present scenario and then discuss different method which has been used for estimation of the panel model.